In the book The Infinite and the Divine, they describe a pain boy experimenting on different bits and pieces of other creatures and necrons and mashing them together. And I remembered I actually have a pain boy and I have a bunch of necron bits, so let's see if I can make a cool pain boy kit bash. And I got some pretty cool stuff here. First of all, I got these destroyers. These guys, they have these massive blades. I think that looks cool. Maybe he can sort of implant it in an arm, give himself a nice big blade. But I also got these guys, these doom stalkers, big legs, some claws over here from the, I don't know what these things are, the little robots that help them and repair them and so on. I've got some kind of Necron character over there. Maybe he stole his cloak, uh, no, some, some time cloak or whatever that is. I don't know what all these Necron guys are doing. And there's of course a big Necron spear here, which is pretty cool too. But I like the idea of him embedding weapons in his body himself. And then over here I got knobs and orcs and God knows what else from my orc uh, start collecting kit. So let me start getting some bits and pieces together and let's see where we go. First of all, let's replace his legs because I'm looking at these claws over here. They're actually not claws, they're legs of the destroyers. So I'm gonna use these to sort of give him something to better move around the table with. Next up then, the actual body of the orc because if I have these legs here, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna attach them to the body. And I kind of feel like a pain boy here myself because I don't know how this is going. I don't know where this is going. Let's just experiment and see where we end up. So let's see. I'll have to get rid of his legs, that's for sure. So I'm just gonna start hacking and sawing over here and clear all of this away. But I wanna keep his butt in, in place because I think I'm gonna need it to attach the legs to. Let's see, let's first get this done and then I think this leg fits here nicely. Let me get some poster buddy. Here we go. Sorry, this is more of a freestyle kid bash. I'm not as organized as some of the, the more famous kid bashes on YouTube. So a little bit of post buddy here on the leg and let's just slap this one on here and see how that looks. Yeah, there we go. That's one leg done. Now for the other one, I think I better just glue the body together and, and see where I can stick him into the orc. So of course he is already a mechanical leg, but yeah, he's gonna lose that one. That goes in there, in the garbage can. I really feel like a pain boy here. <laughs> and we glue this together, awesome. Some more poster party on where the leg was supposed to stay over there. And we'll grab this one over here. And that will fit perfectly over there. See, it's starting to become, start looking pretty cool. And then we have this one in the bag and this conveniently comes with a little rod. So you can guess where that one is going here. There, right in the backside where you wanna have it. So I think this looks pretty cool already. It is clearly orky, clearly Necron. That's what I really want. I don't want some perfect blend. I want this to look orky. It needs to be an orc hacking stuff together, removing his legs, putting in a Necron leg instead, and somehow it works. Now he needs arms, he needs weapons, and he needs his head as well, because the head is very important when you're kit bashing because of the pose because the head needs to look at something important needs to look at the direction it's part of the movement and it's going to be the focal point of the mini no matter what you do people are going to look at the head of your mini first so head needs to be on there and i'm just going to see can i find some necron bits and pieces to have sticking out let's see now the pain boy head it is pretty sort of fixed looking up at that claw so i stuck with the head i stuck with the claw also i like the claw because it makes him really look like a pain boy there's so many tools and syringes and bits and pieces on there getting rid of the claw would mean looking for something to make him look like a pain boy again and i want him to look like a pain boy not like some war boss or something like that or a mega knob it needs to be a pain boy so this i'm happy with i'm sticking with it it's all good. The other side, however, you got this hand over here. And this arm is like a syringe gauntlet, something like that. And I think I can just glue this on and cut off his lower arm and see if I can put something in the stub that he has left, like a blade sticking out. I got these Necron blades over here. Let's see. So if I take this arm and I just cut it off right at where the gauntlet begins, and then I take the Necron arm with this massive blade, and it has this little metallic thing that doesn't look much like an arm anymore. I just have to free up the blade over here and, oh crap, it's breaking, no, there, and clip this off as well. And then I can sort of attach this into his arm like that. Let me just clean it up, show you. It's all good, the blade didn't break and I can just sort of glue it in here. I'll need a bit of green stuff, which is fine. I can make some sort of green stuff bandages to wrap around the blade as well, make it sort of stick more to the body. And of course, this needs to be attached to the body as well. And then it looks like that. 
and I think I'm pretty happy with him. It needs some green stuff here to make the transition a little, little less obvious. And of course the legs. The legs, I'm gonna replace the poster party with some green stuff, stick them in there, clean it up, and then it's time to paint. And I worked on green stuff a little bit more on its arm over here. And as I was doing that, I said I was gonna do some bandages or something, but I've what orc uses bandages? Come on. So instead, it's just a lump of flesh with chain wrapped around the blade to keep it nice in place. I think that that's a little bit more orky than using bandages. Now, for the painting, I'm gonna dry brush his skin with some Death World Forest Green. I, I call it dry brushing. It might not really be dry brushing because I'm doing about as much as putting a base layer on there, but I'm using a dry brush and I'm making dry brushing motions. So I guess it's dry brushing. Fun. When that's done, I'm moving on to rust because everything that's metal on this orc will get rusty. The necron parts, because I assume once they no longer attach to a necron walker, necron body, they start not repairing each other anymore, so itself anymore. So they start to rust as well. And no, orky bits rust always for some reason. So let's start with some Typhus Corrosion all over this, followed by a dry brush of Scrag Brown. And then after this, I'm gonna dry brush it again, but with Ryza rust to make the orange really pop. But not everything on him should be rusted. Of course, bits are used to cut and hack and saw and poke and stick. And so those parts get a little bit of detailing with silver. And then I mean these parts over here that clearly something's been completely knocked out of the frame here. This, this is very heavily damaged. But also the cutting parts of his blades like this one over here. It's gonna get a little bit of silver like that. And I'm gonna dry brush a little bit more all over the model as well. Put a little bit of silver all around the parts that I already hit with some silver before because now I wanna show that the rust is flaking off because when the syringe goes into an orc, it might not be completely clean. There might be some rust on there, but when it comes out, it's nice and neat and clean now. But after all this dry brushing, I've been hitting all kinds of parts of the media that shouldn't be hitting with these paints. Uh, so it's time for a bit of cleanup. I'm gonna start with the cloth because she has a nice apron and that apron of course needs to be white. How else are you going to see all the nice blood spatter that comes from his creative endeavors? And with this cloth, I'm also going to do some other cloth that he has on his arm. I'm also going to hit all those hoses because I want to make it look like there's something glowing or nasty flowing through there. And it works better if you have a white background for the next paints, which is Tesseract Glow for this hose over here that goes to his big claw. And I'm also going to use this to fill up these syringes over here. I want to make this look like it's some nastiness that he's going to inject uh, some poor little orc with. And then on the other hose, I'm going to use some Blood Angels Red. So that it looks like he has some other kind of liquid going into himself than what he gives the little orcs around him. You know, Warboss keeps the best bits for himself. He doesn't start handing them out like, uh, like some kind of idiot. That's how you get usurped really quickly. Now with these hoses and so done, time for the cloth. And I'm gonna show you why I first put Typhus Corrosion on this cloth. Because orcs don't wear silk or fine linens, they wear something coarse or something that's strong that can withstand the orky life. And plastic, it's perfectly smooth. And this sort of coarse cloth, if you add a little bit of Typhus Corrosion, it will look much, much rougher than if it's just this very smooth plastic. And it will show up once you start giving it a little bit of a wash and a little bit of shading. I don't know if it's really well visible on the top-down camera, but I'll show you some pictures after this when I'm finished and you'll probably see the roughness of this cloth really shine through. Because otherwise, you know, it's just perfectly silk. It's not a brand new apron. This is just a lack of a lap of cloth that he found somewhere and strapped it to his belly. Now I'm going over this with streaking grime and I like this for the cloth because it makes it look really nasty and dirty as well. And it's not black because then, you know, I can still add some more details, get some more blood on there and it sort of blends in. It makes it look dirty rather than just shading it. Now this goes over that bandage or that strip of cloth that he has on his shoulder. All the other cloth pieces get a little bit of freaking grime. But I'm gonna shade the rest with this panel liner for gray and blue vehicles. And this is, it's a panel liner, which means it sort of it goes into the recesses easier than other uh, enamel paints. But I mainly just want it because it's nice blackish with a little bit of blue in it. And it gives a really nice shade. And especially on this green, it makes the orc look a little bit darker. You know, I'm still a big fan of the black orc uh, lore that the the tougher and stronger the orc is, the darker his skin becomes and the weaker he is, the lighter his skin. And so this also goes on to the weapons, by the way. All of the rust, everything, if you do a little bit of this on the, on the rust, it'll seep in the recesses with enough white spirits and give it a whole lot more shading and give it all a lot more detail. And then it's time, 
I think, for a little bit of blood and gore. Because what is a pain boy without blood spatter all over him? Not too fast. I went a little too heavy on the panel liner, so I can't see anything in his face anymore. So I'm dry brushing really quickly with some Nurgling Green. Nicely saturated. Gives him a little bit more highlight and makes his face a bit more visible from a bit away. Because this is not a display model. I paint for the tabletop. Not to put models somewhere in a cabinet and look at them from very close. I want to see, look at them from a meter away while I'm playing. So, a little bit of a dry brush all over the skin. The little snotling that's on his back also gets this dry brush just to keep them looking kind of similar. And then it's finally time for blood for the blood god. And I hate doing this on camera because I need three arms, but it's worth it. Some blood spatter just by flicking a brush against a little toothpick. It'll do a lot here for that uh, apron that he has. And I'll splatter a little bit here and there as well, just a little bit, just to get some blood spatter going. And then, of course, the weapons. They are gonna have a lot more blood effects because he actually uses them. But for those, I just do a little bit of a dry brushing motion so that it looks like the blood is actually sort of spattering around the weapon when he cuts something. And I'm gonna do the same, you know, these, these syringes here, they'll have a little bit of blood there. And now a little bit more detail blood by, with a fine detail brush, especially this blood spatter that's on his skin. I'm gonna try and make it a little bit streaky so that it doesn't just look like a big blob got stuck there on his face and nothing's happening. It needs to sort of run off his chin. Because there it doesn't get stuck. If it's on the apron, it's in the cloth, it seeps in there, seeps in there, it gets stuck in there. It doesn't sort of run down. Uh, but on his skin, yeah, for sure, it sort of leaks down. And over here, anywhere where the hoses get into his body, I'm going to add a little bit of blood effects as well. Because, yeah, it's probably not a perfect seal over there. And so I keep going around the miniature, add a little bit of blood detail here and there. Just because I like gory miniatures. You know, this is Fog of Gore. There's a reason the channel is named that way. Now, after all the blood and the, the gore, it's time for some art coat to make all these glossy vials look nice and shiny because this is just a, a gloss varnish that dries up shiny. And then anything that looks like a bit of an exhaust, like this thing over here, gets a dry brush with some black just to simulate soot buildup. And, you know, this isn't burning really clean fuel at all. And over here is another one around that bus. So let's just make it a little bit more dark, make it a little bit more soot and make it look like it's older and sort of getting uh, worn out, not working as well as it should be. After this, I think I can do a little bit more with this green stuff that is in the syringes, because you now let's say he took some parts from the Necrons, but he also took some fluids from them. But that stuff is hard to contain if you're not a Necron. And so I'm taking some of these light crusted rust deposits and I'm gonna make it look like this is corroding the metal around this syringe and just sort of streaking down as well. And just making it look like there's something seriously wrong. And Keeping this in those syringes too long is gonna damage the whole thing. And yeah, now imagine getting it injected by this pain boy. Just to make it look a little bit more awful to be in the vicinity of this pain boy. And after this light crusted rust deposits, a bit of dark crusted rust deposits. Just to vary the rust a little bit. And also around these red syringes, a little bit of the dark crusted rust deposit too. Yeah, make it also look like it's corroding and this liquid that's in there is just eating the metal away. I think we're getting close. I think it's time to start working on the base. And I'm first gonna paint these rocks a little bit purple with Leviathan purple. And I know that sounds weird, but I'll show you the reference pick that I'm working from. After the purple comes thin layer of Armageddon dust, cause Orcs loves Armageddon. And this is gonna be washed with a bit of streaking grime. And then to bring the highlights back and to make it all look dustier, we're gonna dry brush with a little bit of Zandri dust. And that means the base, but also his legs. But what are these things called? His skittling, skittering paws? I don't know, his Necron bits. With a little bit of Sandry dust, because that will make him look a little bit dusty as well. And it might look like he's been walking in this dust for a while and it's not just dropped down from the sky onto this sort of planet. And I'm also taking out these rocks as well. And then it should look a little bit like the latest photos that uh, were sent by Things of Curiosity from Mars. Which look really weird, because the rocks look a little bit purpley and the sort of sand looks like Armageddon dust. I don't know. I figured I'd do a little bit like that. And it's pretty cool, I think. I mean, purplish rocks. Yeah, it's all right. And then he looks like this. And I'm really happy with the result. I think it's a pretty simple kit bash. Just some Necron bits, the pain boy. That's it. Nothing spectacular. But I think it works. It's good enough. And it looks fine from a distance away as well. Paint scheme is simple. Some dry brush, some wash, some highlight. A little bit of detailing here and there. Nothing spectacular. But again, it works. This guy is on a 40 millimeter base, so I can play him, play him as an actual normal orc boss. Nothing 
really too big, but he's too big for a Pain Boy. Pain Boy goes on a 32 millimeter base. But while working on this, it got me thinking like, what if I just went a little bit bigger? What if I went for Gaskul Thraka, but then make him a Pain Boy war boss and make him that big as Gaskul? And I've already ordered the miniatures. I've already ordered this guy, the Brute Terror from the Skaven, because I think that's a beautiful base to start with if you want to have a Pain Boy who has modified himself substantially, who has, you know, improved himself a little bit. And I'm really looking forward to having these things arrive and start working on that kid bash. If you want to see that, you've got to subscribe. And in the meantime, maybe check out this video instead.